believer's inherent nature of Christ. Nature is divine as a phenomenon of the physical world collectively. The phenomenon of the physical world collectively, including the plants, the animals, the mountains, the landscape, the hills, and every other features and product except, except human creations. It's nature. Human beings are not nation. Human beings are not nation. So every other thing that God created is a nation. Now we went for that to describe and establish that nation is God's the basic or inherent features of something, of someone, especially when seems as a characteristic of that thing or of that person. Praise God. So when the word of God says that God created us in his own likeness, in his own image, he created the male and female. So we believe that we have the nature of God who created us in his image. So if, if, if animals, you get animals. Orange, you get orange. Apple, you get apples. So if we have become the begotten of God, so it is a way of saying that we are God. Huh? Don't be called, brothers and sisters. This is what the Bible says. For we were created in the image of God. No one has ever seen God, but we are the representative of God. But we are the image of God. Praise God. So we want to look at what are the obligations or perhaps the characteristics of God that is visible in the life of believers. That's, that's what we that's what we have discussed for the past. Two weeks now. It is often referred to a, a son who is behaving well, even as the Bible says too. If you if you say a, a good son make the the father proud. Hello? <laughs> you are too cold. A good son, this one you didn't say a good girl. Say, a good son makes the fathers proud. Why? Because the father sees some characteristics of himself in that son. God, that's my son. Hello? Yeah. I, I, you haven't heard that before? Yeah. Uh -uh. I heard it when I was growing up with my father. There are things you do. I say, no, you are not like me. I, I don't know where you come from. There are some things that you do, and you're going to say, son, you're like your dad. Go! <laughs> Praise God. You know that word? He feel, he feel comfortable, elated, happy, and joyful that I can see something in me that is in my own son. So what are the things that God can see in us that will make him happy? It's a, it's a, good, it's a good saying, right? That God is expecting you and I to exhibit his character or his characteristics, his nature. And last week we established, according to 1 John 4, 8, 7 and 8, that God is love. You, you didn't check your note? Bible established that God is love. For he loved us so much, he gave us his only because of whoever that believes in him will not have have eternal life. That's love. He loves us. Do you love him? Do you love your neighbors? Mm. Don't answer it. Do you love God? And do you love your neighbor? God is a commandment that if you love God, you love your neighbor. Love God and love your neighbor. It's a commandment. 
The Ten Commandments were compressed into two. Love God with everything God has blessed you with and love your neighbor. That's all Ten Commandments. So love is the nature of God and from your rebirth, you have this inherent embedded in you. You, you ever that is born of the flesh is of the flesh. John chapter 3 verse 6. Whoever that born of the spirit is of the spirit. You have been born of the spirit. You should be a spirit being. In other words, you have Christ in you. You have Christ in you. Hope of glory. Hallelujah. So today we want to buy by what we where we took our text from the book of Philippians. We want to look at our inherent nation in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church in Philippi was establishing one thing. And his thought was so simple, concentrated on one thing, that only in Christ there will be real unity. Only in Christ there will be real unity. With Christ as your model of humility and service, you can enjoy what we call oneness of mind. Only in Christ. It is a challenge for us in our days to see everybody struggling to be somebody without thinking of somebody else. But Jesus Christ did not come because of himself. He came for us all. He came for us all. We, we often hear in unity we all stand. Right? But are we really united? Are we really united, believers? Ah. I, I pray so. Because if we profess that in unity we stand out, we are united, we are not united. That means we are falling. We are falling because we are not united. The head cannot say to the hand, I don't know you, I'm not part of you. The hand cannot function on its own. The leg cannot function on its own. The eyes cannot function on its own. Only in unity. Only in unity. As a body of rest, only in unity, we all going to stand. You enjoy oneness of purpose, of attitude, of actions and reactions. Oneness. You enjoy it through Jesus Christ. You know, there were challenges in the church in Philippi. After the birth of the church, everybody were minding their own. They enjoyed the grace of God. They enjoyed the power of the Holy Spirit. But everybody wanted to do their own thing in their own way. And this needed to be addressed. So he gave them the modest of Jesus Christ. Where we took our tests from. Kind of humility. He started by saying this one. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ... If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Tell your neighbor, I will be like-minded with my believers. It's only one thing that unites us together. Only one thing. And what is it? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And if we come into the house of God and we are not like-minded, if, if some are going to the north and some are going to the south, if some are going to the east and some are going to the west, we're heading nowhere. 
Brother and sister, am I talking to you? I believe there's none of you that want to share your dream with those who will kill your dream. None of you want to share your vision with those who will pollute your vision. None of you. In your ages, in your, in your, in your own journey so far, you can identify some that when, when you come to them, the baby in you will live. And there are some, when you come to them, you don't even want to get, go to them because of the baby you are carrying. There are some led by the Spirit of God, like Mary going to Elizabeth. And when Mary sighted Elizabeth, the Bible said the baby in her womb lived for joy. Lived for joy. There are people that you are attracted to. Either you like it or not, you, you, you see yourself coming to them because they are part of your dream. They are part of your testimony. They are part of your future. They are part of what God has ordained for you. But it must be those who believe in you. Those who believe in you. Those who believe in you. Those who will trample you on that field, who will undermine God's grace in your life. Those who believe in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Say, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. Having the same love. Being of one accord, of one mind. Only in one verse. One love. One mind. Like-minded. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You can't, you can't, you can't be in a car with someone who is not going to the same destination with you. If you go to the terminal, bus terminal in the city, and you want to go to North Carolina, and you end up sitting in the in the in the bus that is heading towards Connecticut or towards Boston. Listen, no matter how professional the driver that is heading towards Boston is, he's not taking you to North Carolina. He's not. And no matter how your destiny to Carolina is being perfected. If you enter that wrong bus, you're not going to get there. So Apostle Paul knew that the only way to foster the grace of God among the believer and the Philip is to establish what we call unity. They must come together in one love, in one mind, in one spirit. Those who will serve God, we serve God in spirit and in truth. So he wrote to them in one accord. Let's go to verse 5 and, and, and enjoy, enjoy the blessing of God. Let this mind be in you, which were also the Christ Jesus. That's grammar there. That's grammar there. After he had read, learned, seen, and heard about Christ, he's now telling these subsequent believers, let this mind also, not, was, not that which was not attainable or visible, because it was noticeable in Christ. It was seen in Christ. Now that you say you are part of Christ, this must be seen in you. If it was not achievable, he wouldn't have written to them. It, if it was not visible, it wouldn't, listen, he wouldn't have suggested. He knew. Hallelujah. If it was impossible for mankind to be like Christ... If it is impossible for us to be like Jesus Christ, 
Bible wouldn't have penned it. The Bible would have written it that we should be like Christ. If, if, if you and I are looking at how is it possible, we will never become like Christ. If we know the how, we don't need him. It is because we don't know the how, that's why we are coming to hear how can we be like Christ. Hallelujah. That's where we are going. But Bible admonishes just to be like Christ. Let this mind be in you. Please tell your neighbor. Let this mind be in you. Which is also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The reason we're struggling with all these other nation and characteristics is because Christ is not filling up the vacuum in our lives. Can I hear you say amen? You can't be part of Christ and you don't have the mind of Christ. It is impossible. It is impossible. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. So maybe from today, your prayer will be, Lord, I want to be like you. If you are struggling with anything, any nation or character or characteristic that is all like Jesus, go and pray. Amen. Don't hide and say, I, I have the only way I can do all things. Pray about it. If you are struggling with the character, nation, and characteristics of Jesus Christ, pray about it. I want to be like you. Amen. You can pray for love. You can pray for unity. You can pray for peace. You can pray for joy. You can pray for anything. Yes. Pray it. Galatians 5 will help you. You read from verse 19 through 23, you will see the kind of grace of God you want to enjoy in your lives. Yes. And you pray it. I want this in my life. I want this in my life. I need love. I need peace. I need this in my life. You can pray it. Desire a good thing. The word of God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Desire a good thing. Include the gift of prophecy. Desire it. You can desire love. Patience. You can desire it. Because that is who your father in heaven is. He's gentle to the core. When he, when he knew no sin, he died for your sin. When he could call up the host of heaven, the angels of heaven, with flaming sword and defend him, he didn't. He endured like a lamb, taken to the slaughter. They slay him, crucify him on the nail. Yet he had all power, but he became powerless because of you and I. Be like Jesus. Tell your neighbor, be like Jesus. And this mind being in you, which is in Christ Jesus. At the point of death, he was still saying, Father, forgive them. At the point of giving up the ghost, he was about to die. I know if, he, if you were to be him, you will call fire. But Holy Ghost fire consumed them. But you know what he did? Father, forgive them all. But they don't know what they were doing. Let this mind be in you. Amen. It's not about taking revenge. They cut my leg, I will cut their head. It's leg they cut. Now you are going for head? Huh? Please, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. In Matthew 5, 44 through 45, which we referred to last week, God allowed his reign to fall upon the unjust and the just. That's God. If you are God, your reign will only fall upon the people you love. And you will allow those you hate to die, to die in drought. But God is not looking at that. God is not looking at that. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Be like him. People will stumble at you. People will crush you. People will, but listen, go forward. Move beyond it. Yeah. Don't be prejudiced. Okay, let me, yeah. let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go further. Hallelujah. Who, being in the form of God, 
They do not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a servant and coming in the likeness of man and be found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of cross. He is God. In the beginning was the world, the world was with God, and the world is God. He is the world who became flesh. He is God. He had the opportunity and the grace to equate himself with God. But you know what? He took the servant leadership from even before the foundation of the world. Yeah. The Bible referred to him in Revelation 13, 8, that he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Amen. He was the one who was slain before the world was come, come together. Yeah. He died for you. Yeah. He died for our sins. Yeah. He died for our sins. The Bible is asking you, let the mind of him, this humility be in you that is in found in Christ Jesus. Humility is a strength. Tell your neighbor, humility is a strength. It's not a sign of weakness. You are not saying it as if you mean it. I allow you, I permit you. Say it to your neighbor. Humility is a strength, not a sign of weakness. Hallelujah. There's public relations challenges about humility because humility is not something we, we flow with in our world. If someone is humble, we, we tag them, we name them, and we take them for granted. We think they are fools. Humility is not foolishness. It's not mediocre either. It's a strength. Humility is a strength. Hallelujah. I want, I want you to, to, to note certain things even as we render. I want you to write down that Jesus Christ gave up his divine form. His divine form, he gave it up because of humility. Gave up his divine form. Secondly, I want you to write it down. He emptied himself of any rights. He broke the yoke of legality. He was not only holding on to a right that I'm God, I'm the son of God. I'm No, 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 no. He was not holding on to, I created this, I know this, I was assisted before this. He was not holding on to no right. He gave us all his rights. How many of you that are still saying, you know, I'm older than him, I'm older? It's the wisdom of the old. Ageless God. Timeless God, the one who, who invent time, oh, but lives outside space and time. The one cannot be, that cannot be contained by anything, but created everything. He let all his right go. He created you, but he came and died for you. I'm older than him. I'm older than her. Why should I greet him for? Why should I greet her first? You don't have the mind of Christ in you. You don't. I say from the altar. Not it down. He became a man. God became man. Have you ever thought about it? He dwells inside this dust. He became man. A spirit because of your redemption. He came. He ate the same food we're eating. He received the same insult we are receiving now that we are crying. Became man. Became limited, even though he's an unlimited God. He knew he was going to die in this flesh. He became. Became man. He became dependent to his father and mothers. Though he created them. He endured to being in the womb of his mother for months. Though he created everything. He became man. He was referred to as the son of carpenter. And Bible referred to that. He, he, was, he was working under his adopted father, Joseph, as a carpenter. God 
in human form. Talking about humility. Inherent nature of Jesus Christ. It's good for us to say we are Christians. But if you put all this one together, do we have question marks? I believe we are going to have question marks. Tell your neighbor, be like Christ. He was obedient to the point of death. Obedient to the point of death. In Sunday school, it was ironical when we were talking about if you've been a believer who professed Christ as your Lord and Apostle and Savior for 90 years, and you have just one minute to die, and you renounce him, you know where you are going? A head fire. That's what the Bible says. All the 90 years and few hours is, is wasted. For those who endure to the end, to those who endure to the end, shall be saved. And you can't say, okay, now let me enjoy this world now. After I'm still 50 or 60, by the time I get to 90, I will change. You don't know the time that it will come. What about that? It's better you have a change of heart now. Let your neighbor change your mind. God loves you. Hallelujah. Obedient to the point of death. And he died a terrible kind of death. Crucifixion was the worst kind of death in their own time. And that was what he took. Crucifixion. Crucifixion. I want you to write this down as we round up. But I know you'll be wondering, but how? How can I? How can I? I'm a born again Christian, filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized by the Holy Ghost. But how can I? I'm struggling in this area. Write this one down. Be considerate to others. Be considerate to others. Don't start square, uh, uh, any meeting or any, any gathering by, by you leading. I know it all. I have, this is the solution. You don't have no solution. It is better for you to think of others. Start any, any meeting. Any, how can we do it better? How can we do it better? Don't be trapped in your opinion. Hear others. Listen to others. Borrow a leaf from all the mistakes of others. Buy books. Read it. Get information. In all you're getting, get understanding. Challenge yourself. You don't know it all. We don't know it all. Be considerate to others. Humility involves an outlook that is other oriented, other oriented, other than self focused. Humility is not about you, it's not about centeredness. It's not about me. Be good. Hallelujah. Ask friends about how you doing. Hello? Ask friends about how you doing. It's not a weakness if I should come to you and be asking you, what do you think we can do differently in the church? It's not. I'm not weak, not that I don't know what to do. But I need to hear from you. Ask feedback from others. In our unit, in our department, how are we doing? Don't say I'm the boss. Don't let us go there. Let his mind be in you. It's in Christ Jesus. Mind of God. It being in you. Humility is a strength, not a sign of weakness. I appreciate others. I appreciate others, including their opinion. I appreciate them. Don't, 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 don't look down on the younger ones. They, they are in your life for a reason. You never know when their contribution will be the pathway to success. Have a listening here. Have a listening here. Let me say that it is okay, you know, to, to be proud of your strength. But mind you, for anyone that have highs, Hello? For anyone that have eyes, they have laws. As strong as you think you are, there are some weaknesses in you. There are some weaknesses in you. 
So it's good, you know, to, to, to flaunt our strength. But be cautious. Remind yourself of your weakness. Praise God. To our brother that one says the word of God. Hallelujah. God is Secondly, rid yourself of prejudice. I, I can't over stretch or overemphasize on the rid yourself completely of prejudice. You know, um, in that community that you, what they used to do, in that tradition that is what they used to do. You know, I, I can't marry those people. I, I can't go to those people. Rid yourself of prejudice. Even in some religions, in some religion. We, we, we tag them as if, no, we can't, we, we can't touch, touch them. We can't talk to them. We can't associate with them. Are we better than them? Christ came first to the Jew. The Jew turned their back against him. He went to the giant. He came for all. If the mind of Christ is in us, ah, let us embrace all. That does not mean you will bow down for their own God, but love them with the love of Christ. After Apostle chapter 10, we will, when you get home, read it. The story of Apostle Peter, the rock of the church. He almost missed it. He missed, not that almost, he missed it. The Bible says, the, the Spirit of God lowered down a shirt filled with different kinds of animals through vision. And the word came Peter, rise, kill, and eat. Say, ah, <laughs> kill what? I'm a Jewish. Circumcised the eighth day, Abrahamic descent. I will have never touched anything unclean. I will not eat. He went back and said, the Bible said the shit went. The third time again, three times he refused. God left him alone. And God called this division to go. Thereafter, he woke up. And three men were, called, were being sent by Cornelius. Cornelius was the person who brought... Reviver to the Gentiles. Hello? Yes. Cornelius was praying, and God appeared to him. Cornelius, your arms is being taken care of. I've seen all your loyalty and commitment, and your faithfulness. Say someone to get Peter and bring Peter to your house. And he's, as he woke up, Peter found this man, and the Spirit of God said, follow them. Peter almost missed this opportunity to evangelize the Gentiles as an apostle. Read yourself of prejudice, brothers and sisters. Don't say no. Don't, say, don't be high-minded. Don't say no to a group of person, to a person, to a particular region or particular religion. Don't say no. You don't know what God will use you for. You don't know whom God will use you to, to bring into the fold. Read yourself of prejudice. These are Nigerians. Nigerians, that's how they're doing. Oh, Ghanaians, the Asians. Read yourself of prejudice. Read yourself completely. Take care of them. That's Holy Spirit to help you. To broaden your understanding. You are offered cassada leaf, eat it. Mac and cheese, eat it. Anything you are offered. Just Bible say, bless them in the name of the Lord who made them. And eat Produce. You say you only yellow rice, nothing in it. Eat it. There are people who are dying to have the yellow rice that you are condemning. Praise God. Be a good listener. A good listener. Be a good listener. Listen to others. You can ask thousands of questions, but if you don't listen to the responses, listen, it will do you no good. Hello? You can ask millions of questions. Millions of questions. But if you're not listening to the responses, just a waste of time. Be a good listener. To the younger one, to the babies around you, be a good listener. We have some younger kids around us uh, at home. And when they're making some, some cry, I say, no, 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 no. At, and it's instinct. When you go, it's said that they make poo-poo. And that's why they are uncomfortable. 
They need something. They can't talk. Don't shut down others because you think you are in a position of authority. Don't shut others. Listen to them. Be a good listener. Hallelujah. Accept failure in its actual contest. Let's note it down. Accept failure in its actual contest. Failure is not the end. Hello? Failure is not the end. Failure in anything. Or any attempt is an opportunity to try it again in a different way. Oh, my God. You will have some lecturers and professors who are the master of everything. They never feel anything. They are from elementary to, to college. They are, you know, ever first. I clap for them. I clap for them. But if you don't make mistake, they won't realize how to do it better. So the mistake is not saying that is the end of your life. That's why I say accept it the way it is in the context, not out of context. We're not certainly for mediocrity. We're not, we're not failures. There is no failure in Christ. But you see, you can do it again. Jesus Christ three times went and prayed. The apostles failed him. Can you pray with me? He said three times. They failed him. But you know the good about it? He knew they were going to fail. He had already provided the strength for them when they come back to their senses how to go and use their failure to be a strength to the universe. He knew. He didn't give them that strength immediately not to sleep because he knew that they need to learn from their weaknesses. And when we see people who are making mistakes around us, don't mock them. Don't laugh at them. Share their pain along. Even though it is, uh, do it. Share their pain with them. Don't be on phone and be running them down. Finally, be fascinated with the creation. Be fascinated with the creation. If you can't see God, in the flowers. You can't see God in a human being. Hello? We have some flowers in the church that are at the back there. If all what you can do is to take the leaves, take the leaves, take the leaves every day, you don't have the fear of God. You have never thought, how does that flower grow? What takes that flower to grow? Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Be fascinated with the creation. When you see the blue lagoons, appreciate it. When you heard about the Dead Sea, appreciate it. God created light. He created darkness. He created good. He created bad. When he threw you the good aspect, appreciate it. If the unexpected in every table comes to thank him. Job say, can God continue to do good without do evil? He was not expecting evil, but when evil came, he knew that he was the one who had been giving him the good all this while. He was asked to cause God and die. He responded, uh-uh. Let this mind be in you, in Christ Jesus. I will not cause God, whatever he throw at me. What is God throwing at you? What's God throwing at people around you? Instead of you condemning, maybe the church is no more praying or God is no more in the church, thank God and ask God to give you a way out of it. Appreciate human being. Appreciate the creation. Appreciate where you are, where you used to be, and where you are aspiring to be. Appreciate it. Take notice of and extract gratitude for the world's beauty and wonder. Go to Disney World, you see, you see wonders. And you'll be wondering, who invented all this? How does how do Disney himself 
was able to get all these hectares of land. How? Just one body? Could the land come back to and think about it? Think about it. Is a he was just one head. We can do it. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, right now, sister. Philippians 2 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. If this mind was not in Christ, listen, it will not be expected of believers to be humble. It is about humility. Like I say, humility is not, it's not that you have to set it for mediocrity. Just accept everything because you are humble. That's not what we say. Oh, that's what is expected of them to do to you. In this body of Christ, the only way for us to achieve our goals this year and all the year is for us to be united together in one mind, in one accord, in one spirit. And I know the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. The word of God said we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We are not leaning on our own understanding, but we are trusting and believing in God. We are trusting and believing in God that through God we are more than conqueror. We will do all things. We are able to do all things. I want you to go before the Lord this morning and ask the Lord to baptize you afraid with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, baptize me afraid with the power of the Holy Spirit. Baptize me afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit. Baptize me afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, baptize me. I cannot do anything on my own, but I rely on you solely. I'm depending on you solely, and I know you have never failed. You will not fail me. Baptize me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, baptize me. Baptize me, Lord. Baptize me, Lord. Baptize your church. Baptize the people. The men, the women, the children, the youth, the if, and the tall, and all this ministry. Lord, baptize them with the power of your Holy Ghost. Baptize us, Lord. We need you, Abba, Father. We need your awesomeness. We need your praise. And we need your grace. We need your glory upon this household of faith. The grace to move ahead, to forge ahead. We need that grace from you, Lord. We need that grace from you, Lord. We need that grace from you, Lord. Fresh unction from above. Fresh unction from above. Grace to see others as you see them. Grace to see less of ourselves and see more of you. Ability to humble ourselves in season and out of season. Lord, breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe on us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. If you receive that prayer, please put your hands together for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our God is good. And all the time, I'm going to call on Barashina. To take our offering. Let this mind be in you as in Christ Jesus. Even if you ask a thousand questions and you don't take time to listen to the answers, you've just wasted your time. You got some nuggets of words to live by, given to us by the pastor. And since he has prepared, he has been able to do all this. I pray that each and every one of you to please lead your hand, stretch your hands out to him. And pray that the Lord God Almighty will replenish from whence that virtue came forth. Because he did not speak as of himself, rather he spoke as the oracle of God. My people have a saying, you do not fear 
whoever you are passing a message on to, rather you fear the person that gives you the message. Pray that the Almighty God will replenish his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding, and his appreciation of the task that has been given unto him to be the shepherd over the sheep handed over to him. Ask that he will not fail nor falter and that the Lord will back him up. Ask that the Lord shows himself mightily in his stead over himself personally and his family and nothing that he lays his hands upon will he fail in. Ask that as after all said and done, he will receive that great and mighty words. Welcome, thou great servant of the Most High. And that everything he has passed on to us, those words will not come against us in Jesus' name. And Father, I never want to thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for what we have received. We ask you, you almighty God that does not give one a task without giving you the wherewithal to do it, will give each and every one of us the wherewithal, the brains, the willing heart to be able to achieve what we need to do in Jesus' name. Let this mind be in us as that was risen Christ Jesus. And we will continue to be good and abiding servants of yours. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Let us have a seat.